Welcome to Netball SA Stadium. And as you can see, there is a packed crowd once again. They love their netball down here and they are celebrating the end of Heritage Round here in Kwana Country. 25 years of history of the Adelaide Thunderbirds and they'll be hoping to make a little more but there is the team walking off court that are going to try to stand in their way. It's a true test today for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They've had wins obviously over the Collingwood Magpies and the GWS Giants but maybe this one is going to be a test of where they really sit uh, uh, against the Sunshine Coast Lightning as we look at the lineups once again. And the Thunderbirds, as I said before, outside of Potgeeter at goal shooter and the goalkeeper Shamira Sterling, there's versatility in the middle and that's going to hold them in good stead if COVID does indeed hit. But also, the teams don't know what they're coming up against. Yeah, and I mean, we can see a bit of a change up in their lineup. Al McDonald getting the nod at wing attack. She was awesome for them last week. It's nice. I think that Tanya Obbs is really rewarding that effort out there. We see Georgia Hall just back into goal attack. I mean, on the other side, there's even shuffling around in the midcourt of the Lightning. Matty Hinchliff getting a centre. Mahatlia Cassidy in a wing defence. They're still trying to find their feet. They're very inexperienced pretty much from wing defence down to goalkeeper. They need to start getting some gained ball but it might just take a little bit of time. So it's been a struggling start for them but hopefully they can put some consistent minutes together today. Coming back out onto the court, the Sunshine Coast Lightning. That's not them, obviously. That's the mascots. Don't worry. Uh, but the Sunshine Coast Lightning are coming out onto court. And it's, it's a funny stat that you, you brought uh, when we're talking pre-show is that, yes, they might be 0-3 at the end of this, the Sunshine Coast Lightning, if indeed the favourites win. But both times they won the Premiership, what was their stat after three games? Zero and three, Will. Right. So they know how to win when their backs are up against the wall. And I think that that strong culture that they've been building since 2017, we saw Laura Sherry talking about Nolene, setting that legacy for them, uh, that they're going to want to try and, as I said, get a win definitely, but they know what they need to do. They're just going to go out there and execute it. Georgie Hall just coming out, followed by Lenise Potgeeter, and then the bench players who we will hopefully see across the course of this one. But it's certainly been working. There's been more fluidity through the midcourt. Uh, Hannah Petty's playing the position she wants to play. And they just look so much stronger than they have in a slightly disjointed midcourt over the last couple of years. But that's all behind us now as we move forward. Wood with her hands on the ball. Hinchliff and already a tip and Sterling picks it up. A statement of intent. Great to see Steph Wood get her hands on the ball after having a week off. But the last thing you want to do is get confidence in that goalkeeper, Shamira Sterling's hands. She's a real, like, vibe indicator for this team. So her getting her hand on the ball really early um, is, is it absolutely what they want to try and set themselves up for a goal here. Now to honour it. Circle edge over the top, and it's Dehaney who gets the front position. She was strong in a losing side last week. Or just gives away about a foot on Dehaney. Doesn't matter on that occasion, though. And we open the scoring, and there is the Harvey Norman replay. Sterling racking up the stats already. Pogita so strong on the baseline. Nice little popover pass by Horges. They've got a really strong connection. They've been building it over the last couple of years. But you can really start it just coming a bit more natural to both of them. They've really got some versatility in the circle do the Thunderbirds in terms of how they approach it. With Potgita playing so well, as you said, on the baseline. And then the ability to have Tipper Dwan come on and completely change the complexion of what the attack looks like. The 100 game, a Sherian. You can see the defence of Adelaide really forcing the shooters out and, and wide, or trying to close them in together, but pushing them away from the post, making them have to go to that nice long shot. But this is what Steph Wood is so good with the ball in hand. She's prepared to work it around, go again. Brings real calm. A wealth of experience, obviously, but a calm that was lacking last week. They were strong in the first quarter, but then things got a little frantic and a lot of super shots didn't drop and things can get out of hand. But Steph Wood, just a little bit of calm. Nice one-two between Horges and McDonald, and Potgeeter gets involved as well. 
Just give and go. Tanya Ops is really strong on that. You can hear her talking about it in their timeouts, obviously, to her team. But she says, go back to what our game plan is. It's that short give and go. You saw Al McDonald do it. You see Georgie Hoare just do it. They back themselves in. You can give it and provide another option. Create play that way. Pocchita picks up another one. Three one, so a mini advantage then to the home side. You get the feeling that Kara Conan is going to have a few bruises by the end of this one. There are elbows and legs flying everywhere. Great rebound there by Latanya Wilson. It's her first start for the season. I'm sure she'll be looking to put a, put a stamp on that position. Yeah, she brings yet more of that Jamaican swagger into the defensive end of the T-Birds. Wilson and Sterling are just going to develop more and more into such a formidable pairing to be coming up against. From distance this time, Hoare just hands it off. Just tempts Dehaney to come in. And Dehaney this time picks up the defensive rebound. Hinchliff to Hinchliff. A really good transition there by Lightning. Patient to work it around. You get a nice close shot option. Percentage play, that's what they're so known for and what they're really good at. Probably a really good confidence boost for them to feel that straight away at the start of the game and build from here. Certainly not the frenetic start that we've seen in games in the first couple of rounds. More measured. We question the Lightning's gained ball. They're picking up some really early ones. They've just got to capitalise on it. Yeah, their stats just do not tell the story. They've only picked up seven rebounds in the opening two games. And this possession changes again. They've only won one quarter. As onto the ground goes Mahalia Cassidy. And they've only taken three intercepts to the T-Birds 18 over the first couple of rounds. Good defence set up there by the Adelaide Thunderbirds, trying to shut down that middle channel, force the attackers wide. They got the wing attack and centre to the pockets, but they were a bit slow in shutting down that, that nice pop through from Conan. There was the Harvey Norman replay on that bump between Wilson and Cassidy and Kira Trogt. You were right there. She went to the floor, but she gave herself a big pump up after she got up. That really lifted her and her team to get that ball down. The crowd, they certainly sighed as she hit the ground and got up and shouldered that player away. It doesn't, just because it's not, has, doesn't have that frenetic pace yet, it's a little more measured, doesn't mean it's not physical. Mankerville, that was a low percentage one, and they've coughed it up. For a non-contact sport, you've, uh, you'd only have to ask the heritage players in the room, the bruises, the bumps, the knee surgeries, the ankles that they've all been recovering from from the past couple of years. Lightning off to a really strong start. Look at them all up and about. We haven't really seen that from them in the last couple of weeks. No doubt they've had a very interesting reset week at training and need a fast start and they're going to go... Suddenly they go on a five-goal run. From 3-1 to 6-3. And you can hear a pin drop here at Netball SA Stadium. And to break that run, Potkita, she doesn't muck around. She sometimes has a very fast shooting action. Doesn't take her time. But serves her well on that occasion, the South African. Cassidy immediately releases to Wood. The names that we're seeing get really involved for Lightning early on. Sherian, Wood, Conan, all part of their back-to-back -back premierships. They're the ones where, that have to drive it from the start. So starting strong like this will only give their defence the confidence to try and fly for those balls and, and win some back for them when they need to. I thought they're the only three names that are involved in those two premierships, no? Yes, the, the last ones remaining. Well, that's when you need to look at those players to, to lead from the front. The ones that know how to win, they know how to put together an incredible season. They've got so much experience, and that's what's happened. Although the gap now, with nearly at the halfway point of this quarter, is down to two. The Lightning, though, have possession. This is a really good test for Lightning as well. They haven't probably been tested, as we mentioned uh, pre-game as well. Um, on the scoreboard, it's been quite tight. 
um, but they've then been able to push away. So it'd be interesting to see how they can calm themselves and get back into their, their groove and play their game plan. That was a stray one from Cassidy, and that's another stray one. No, kept in very well done by Nankervell, picked up by McDonald. And both teams are coughing up ball. Little scrappy. What a take. Good job. I thought I had that in my hands there, but Nankerville keeping it in for her side. It is all about those one percenters, and she's obviously a very strong player for them to inspire her teammates to go that extra push every time. You went to catch the ball. I went to dive out of the way, which says a lot about both of us as people and competitors. Let's not explore that any further. Let's get back to the netball. <laughs> Let's not draw too many conclusions. And to level it up after all of that, Potkita overcooks it. But Hall just comes up. She's struggling over on. the hands of Tahaney a little bit, Potkita, even though she's really close to the post. She's got a really good lean. I said in my tips during the week, she has the wingspan of a 737 KDN to Haney. She certainly does. She knows how to put herself in the right positions too. Kira, how are you seeing this middle part of the quarter play out? Yeah, look, this, the centre pass is working really well for the Lightning. What I'd like to see is Hinchliffe just give Sherry in an extra second before she looks away off the centre pass. She's on. Um, but they're linking up beautifully as we see the goal go through there for Kara Conan. Uh, they're linking up really well in that second phase with Steph Wood as we see Mahalia take an amazing intercept at wing defence and work the ball down. There's a little, more, a little bit more zip towards Lightning's gameplay. They're letting it, letting it go, they're seeing it, giving it. And they're having it taken away by the Thunderbirds captain, Hannah Petty. But you're absolutely right. That's what happens when you get a rocket at some point during the week. Cassidy looks hard done by. Georgie Horges is really in this one. She leads all comers in terms of missing net points. She's picked up a few feeds, centre pass receives, assists, and she's three from three and looking to go four from four. I watched her during the warm up. She didn't miss a single shot. She must have shot 25 in a row. Didn't miss one from all areas of the circle. Sometimes you forget how young she is. She's a real general in their attack end without even maybe having a leadership title. She really sets the pace for them. She's really calm. She's that, that maybe younger uh, step version for the, the Thunderbirds. Yeah, that's a, that's a great comparison. You're 100% correct. As we head into the power five, super shots in effect. And you think with as tight as it is, no one's going to be game to blink just yet. We'll see who's feeling confident. We haven't seen too many long-range shots taken even by the goal attacks that are probably the ones that are going to be shooting them. So expect them to just continue to chip away at that one point. Both teams make that one stick with Cassidy. I was going to mention, both teams are getting a lot of turnover, but it's all from a high pass. We spoke about keeping it low, keeping it short, keeping it out of the defender's aerial opportunity. So both teams lifting the ball and getting getting penalised by it. So hopefully they'll start to work it a little bit shorter and give those nice, easy front options a little bit more. Conan looking a little more composed, having Steph Ward as her circle partner. Knowing exactly what her job is, which is to stay deep on the baseline. Eight from eight, Wood two from three. She's shooting from a bit further out, though. We've seen Macy Nankerville come off and Taylor Will Williams come in. She gives a really good spark to the Adelaide Thunderbird. She usually comes on, plays a couple of, couple of minutes, plays her role, and then they'll rotate in. So it might be good for Maisie to see it from the sideline to then be able to go out there and execute exactly what the coaches needed to do. And Williams has been around as a training partner for a couple of years now, so she's certainly well entrenched in this team. She was team of the league too in the Nipple SA Premier League last year with the contacts and starting to get some good game time at, at crucial moments. So one goal in at three minutes. And there's your net points, Georgie Hall just leading all comers. Great underneath, sweep. though, in the Nissan net points, Cassidy, Conan and Cherry, and exactly the people we've been talking about back, with her as being the backbone 
of this attack and why they are up and about. Ticking away at the scoreboard, Adelaide Thunderbirds. Two minutes 30 on the clock. The captain, ball in hand, looks for options, and Hinchliffe provides one. Tip again, this time from Wilson, and Sterling picks up. That high pass over really tall hands of the Jamaican defence for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Where well, you can see down in Adelaide's attacking, they're patient, they're willing to go again, bring it in. That high pass, Cody probably came off the hold a little bit too much, but Hinchcliffe has put a few of those in and not really extended it far enough into space. Wilson on the bench. Now, after that effort, Matilda Garrett on the court in goal defence for the Thunderbirds. It's a huge strength that they have being able to rotate. Fresh legs. We obviously know that there's another two games coming in in um, the next week. So if they can get these fresh legs on and really have a good team performance, they're winning on all fronts. Again, you tried to go for the ball, mate. You've retired. I know. Let I just go. want a touch. <laughs> just want a possession. Just one. Just give me something, coach. Hinchliff. Hinchliff again. Top of the circle, looking for options. Wood's using up, you know, 2.9 seconds each time, and she, she's composed enough to know that and decide on the right option. Garrett. Garrett just keeps that one under control. Nice to come on and have an impact like that straight away, the 24-year-old. Signed on here. Oh, and this time it's Dehaney who takes it back and then throws it out of court. Well, we talked about the teams, especially the Sunshine Coast Lightning, not giving any space when they're in defence. Stay within a metre. They're doing exactly that. They're making it difficult, and the same is the other way. They are. They're creating those opportunities. This is what I love from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Really quick, as I said, short, sharp transition. When they start to float it, that's when they start to bring the opposition back into play. Looks a little long out of hand, but it wasn't. And the T-Birds look like they're going to go into the quarter time break with a slight advantage. How slight will it be? That's the question. 15 seconds on the clock. Wood, top of the circle. Well, we have a super shot to round it out. And it's a high arc. It doesn't drop, though. Three seconds on the clock, and it's going to beat them. That was a chance to level it up. But it is not going to happen. And instead, it's the Adelaide Thunderbirds who take a two-goal lead into quarter time in front of a crowd all dressed in pink here in Adelaide. If we're going to stay, if we're going to stay to do the wall, you've got to be connected, all three of you. It's not, it's not worth two of you going and one going out the side. Still, still stay, still, 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 you want to deny the middle channel for them. Okay, so still stay connected through the middle and make them run the wides around, and then second phase is your focus. Yep, yep. Hey, um... Some chat there for the midcourt from Kylie Byrne and that is Origin Energy quarter time as they head back out onto the court and we can see some orange armbands out there as well for the Sunny Coast Lightning. Can you tell us what that's about? Yeah, sadly the Sunshine Coast Lightning no worries, Monica. will lost a um, you know, courageous family member to them. It was the daughter of Melbourne Storm Chairman Matt Tripp and wife Yaz. Bella was 14 years old and sadly passed uh, away with leukaemia. So they're wearing orange armbands today uh, to obviously send their condolences and sympathy sympathies out to that family. Yeah, and uh, we obviously echo that from the Fox Sports team. Devastating loss to the netball family. But we continue on with round three, heritage round. And there's been a couple of changes out there and a collision too to start off with between Laura Sherian and Elle McDonald. And there you go, in at centre is Sherian. And I see Annie Miller, the 21-year-old out there in wing attack as well. So some changes in the Sunshine Coast midcourt. We'll head down now to Kira Tromp. She had her um, 
Eyes and ears in the T-Birds huddle. Kira, tell us, what was that all about? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're seeing it out on court at the moment. Tanya Ops spent some time with her defenders just talking about the hide advantage that they've got in there with Steph. So she's looking for her players to come off the body and have a crack at that ball uh, in the air. So we'll see if that plays out in this next uh, five or ten minutes. All right, very delicately poised this one in 2021. Both games between these two sides were decided by a single goal, and we're at a single goal right now. Both teams won away as well. So, Sunny Coast on the job, and again, it's Garrett who manages to time that perfectly. I think so. Steph Wood had got there a little bit too early. Her timing was a little bit um, off, and obviously Miller just seeing it, giving it straight away rather than reading those hands. Oh, an unfortunate little slip there by Taylor, Taylor Williams. Everyone's a bit gun shy after Sam Wallace uh, back in the opening round. Nobody wants to see a player go down like that. There was a bit of a, what do you call it, an ooh through the crowd. Yeah, a few holding their breaths. You just want to see them bounce straight back up. Great feed there by Sherry Ann to Conan. Thirteen goals apiece. Conan shooting from close has made no mistake just yet. And gorgeous from longer range. It's that pressure that we mentioned with Suns trying for his lightning. They build, they build, and then they give away a really undisciplined penalty, whether they're out of play on the shot or it's out of the circle. You just really want to put the Thunderbirds under the pump. See whether they can they handle that pressure and what they're going to do with the ball. They did have a period during the opening quarter. Lovely feed threading the needle there from Sherry into Conan. And doesn't she enjoy it? But they had a period during the middle of the quarter, went on a 5-1 run. And that's exactly what happened as they turned the ball over the Thunderbirds. Mahalia Cassidy getting a good tip. And Kylie Burton talked about that in their huddle. She said, when someone gets a tip, back her up. And you saw Miller rush straight to, to try and find that loose ball. Tips are really hard to come by from the Lightning, so when they get them, they need to back each other up and then obviously make it count. Center contact. What Lightning are doing really, really well in this goal circle is getting that separation with uh, Tilly Garrett and Shamira Sterling, giving Conan that baseline nice open space to hold and also to deliver that ball into. Conan doing an, an excellent job placement against Sterling as well. Keeping her a little quiet. Wood, short to Miller, circle edge, looks for the option. Again, the front space held by Conan, this time with Garrett behind her. As we see Adelaide now call the HCF timeout. A little bit shocked, a little bit on the back foot. They're, they're a vocal crowd here, but I tell you what, when things don't go the way of the team you can really hear, we can really hear each other I feel like everyone can hear us when that happens <laughs> it is quiet they are a nice strong vocal army but not when their team's hey, not in front much better urgency on turnover to score and when we get the ball in our hand we're getting in a position to set ourselves up play do not lapse from these little moments that's what's got us that run then let's make sure we're ball side so as soon as first phase lands have a look forward shift to ball side in attack uh, remember they're coming down and flooding and the last thing we want to do is go around the middle so do we have a lead up the middle to get them to collapse and then use down the side keep the urgency up come on girls let's go let's go Energy, yeah, okay? Yeah. We don't let them in here. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's go. You've got 30. Do you know what you're going to? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. What are we doing on the centre part? Yep. One, two, one, two. You can see even in that moment, there was 35 seconds to go in the HF timeout. They were like, let's go. And Steph was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We've got more doing? time. Relax. And then the question came, so what are we doing? So as Steph Wood just brings this moment where, hang on, let's just think about what the next play is. And uh, that just shows the experience. And back onto the court comes Latanya Wilson. But she comes in at goalkeeper with Shamira Sterling now taking a breather. So Tanya Ops trying different things there in the back end because Kara Conan, she's having you know a strong game thus far and enjoying that current matchup. So gorgeous. 
from the edge of super shot range. Obviously, we're not there yet, but I'm seeing some super shots in Georgie Horges' future in this game. Miller, Wood, sharing in the pocket, provides the option and lets it go over the top of Wilson. That's got to be pinpoint. They make it look so easy. Forward option from Wood. And eventually, with Garrett on the ground, Nobody likes that, do they? Real thud here at Netball SA Stadium as Matilda Garrett hit the ground. Like I said, it might be non-contact, but the ground's there to contact anyone at any time. This urgency that Kylie Burns asked of her team, let's not have a lapse, just continue to build that pressure. There's two bodies. Bodies on the, the floor. Again. That's why I'm telling you it's safer on this side of the, of the, of the table. Of course. Trust me, my knees know about it. <laughs> All right, we're back to one. And the Lightning, they need to continue their little run. And to do that, they need to make sure they score from this possession. Otherwise, suddenly everything evaporates once again. They need to go on with these little bits of momentum. Sherry and, and as the ball flies across court twice and just over the outstretched fingers of Wilson, Conan misses her first. Now that the uh, Sh Shamira Sterling is actually off the court, you can see the Lightning starting to put a few more higher balls in. They know she's so strong in the air, so they kept it nice and short and sharp. She's off the off the bench, onto the bench now, off the court, and now they can start to let them fly a little bit higher. You've got to be a bit careful when Shamira Sterling's prowling around, as we are when Kira Tromp is prowling around on the sidelines, Kira. Yeah, I spent some time listening to Tanya Ops. She's really wanting those uh, centre court players to use the middle channel and go back to basics with their give and goes like they were doing so well in the first quarter. She feels like they've gone away from that with the wall set up defence that the Lightning are running off their centre pass. So all three players, wing defence, goal defence, as we see a great intercept from Hannah Penny. And then another one from Steph Wood. It's going everywhere out here. Um, but she really wants them to keep it short and sharp. So let's see if they can do that for this next uh, 10 minutes or so. That is really the Adelaide Thunderbirds game plan, is working it short, working those give and goes, dominating that middle channel, having multiple, multiple options. And when they go away from it, that's when they start to have lots of turnover ball and they keep their opponents close on the scoreboard. So if they want to draw it out, they just need to be really disciplined in sticking to what they need to be doing with those basics like Kieran mentioned. Conan backs up a miss with another, but and she's called for it too, so a win for Wilson. Oh, and they can't... Multiple times we've seen that happen. Work one end of the court hasn't been profited on. The key, when the, you, there. the key when you get those intercepts is you can let the ball do the talking and let the ball speed continue, but you still need to have a slight composure. And you can play off the one second, you can play off the two second, you can play off the three second. And Lightning have definitely done that in this quarter. They're showing that they can let it fly. Great intercept there by Hannah Petty. Yeah, an experienced team will, I guess, not get overexcited when they pick up that intercept and just reset as per normal. Seven and a half minutes, so we're halfway through the second quarter. Lightning by two here in South Australia, and twice they've won at home. They've got four home games in a row, as you mentioned, Maddie, and they want to come away from that with four wins because they're going to have a lot more away games later on in the season. We have an exciting change happening as we see Pogbita go into the bench. Tipper Dwan coming on to goal shooter. It's quite interesting coming with the seven minutes to go, hopefully to get her eye in and then hopefully and put up some two-point shots when that five-minute five, five, power, five minute power play happens. Another nice feed from Sherry into Conan. A settler for her. That's her 18th from 20 attempts as we... Go to an HCF timeout with six minutes and 56 seconds on the clock, and it was called by the Lightning. They keep getting a couple of goals to the good, but they cannot shake the Thunderbirds or put any real gap into them at this point. When Tilly and Taylor were connecting, Mahalia is looking, so Elle's got to be free. Do you know? Like, we drew Mahalia in, and then we ignored Elle. And it was still a safe pass, so we've got to expose 
and recognise when they're like Tara and Mahalia and all of them are coming up, there has to be somebody free. So if you're that free one, don't go too deep. Really demand the ball because we can use you and we can use you. All right, so now we're going into sides movement. So one to post, split the middle. Okay, we're not, and it's not in five foot time. We just want to get ball through the ring. All right, we have to come on. If you are on Mahali or Atali, you've got to get past the ball before the part, like the ball's thrown. You've got to come on strong. Let's go, guys. Let's do the basics, the rest of the basics. What sort of pass? We'll go wide middle. Let's go. Three rows on three. One, two, three. Two Let's go. On the back of those heritage dresses are the names of all 103 capped players for the Adelaide T-Birds. As we look at the distant net points, match leaders, and Laura Sherry in her 100th game has been in plenty. And Georgie Horges, well, she, she's racking up stats across the board, and she's led by 10 out of 10 uh, for her shooting. But feed, centre pass, receives, assists. She's doing the job. And also on the court right now is Kate Walsh, who brings 100 games worth of experience herself. She obviously used to be a former Adelaide Thunderbird herself. She probably knows their game plan quite well. But Georgie Horge is still sinking them through, putting that pressure back on to the, to the Lightning. All right, we were listening to Tanya Ops just then. So Kira made her way up to listen to Kylie Byrne. What did you find out, Kira? Yeah, Kylie was up and about with her team. She really implored them to lift, lift like Mahalia is. And they really want to set that standard of chasing down every loose ball and being within a metre of their player. And I think Mahalia is really setting the standard at the moment for the Lightning in defence. She's sticking on her player and she's turning over a lot of ball for them. In contrast, I was obviously listening into the Thunderbirds and... Um, Tanya was talking about how Mahali is sitting high to get those intercepts and how the Adelaide Thunderbirds need to start exposing it. Al McDonald must be free, so don't sink so far back. Sink a little bit higher and, be, and demand that ball. You're free, demand it. Close to a three-second call there. It's a ball run away. Dwan looks long. Cassidy saw that, but she couldn't make it clean. Ball out of play. And McDonald will look for a way into the circle. Horges will provide it. We're not at super shot range just yet. She's just inside anyway. And hands off to Dwan, who picks one up. But the Lightning will have had the run of it. They're 10-7 in this quarter now. And they hold a one-goal advantage and possession. Conan in the pocket. Sterling hits the floor. She's back on. Latanya Wilson back to the bench. And Garrett stays at goal defence. And there is the Hooter for the super shot. It's a good addition to bring Sterling back on in this power five. She has such a long reach. Great rebounding capacity. So they are going to take those long range shots. You need to have her in there to pick up the scraps. Gone inside, takes a time, rushes the shot in the end, but it doesn't matter. And the gap back to one. Four and a half to go in the last half of Heritage Round. Walsh couldn't get her hands on that one. Williams, and now for super shot range, no, Dwan. Shoot it. <laughs> you and all the crowd wanted it too. Yeah, but you know what? Or just has a hot hand, and from that place, right, will get one in the bank. I don't know what, a goal in the hands worth two in the bush? Is that a, is that a saying in netball? Look, Probably I, not. I think when you get a gained turnover ball, if you can score a one and you know it's your next centre pass, then you can maybe might want to have a crack at a two and get, like, three points. Um, so it was probably a smart move, but unfortunately, Al McDonald getting that attacking contact. I just got white line fever and wanted to shoot it. It's nothing more You're complicated than that. And Wood does it, doesn't make it drop. Offensive rebound, put a foot on the line for Conan. And Sterling will kick us off again. 3.25 on the clock. There's a lot of players flirting with a three second call here. But if they're saying Carbon, can, yeah, Carbon can post. Really good screen set by Dwan. Nice little one-two there. Dwan on the back end of it. And the Lightning restore their one-goal advantage. 
Al McDonald's come off, may see Nankerville back onto wing attack. But we see Al McDonald placing that centre bib on maybe to take Williams off for a couple of minutes and get some fresh legs back into that centre. That's that versatility. All of their all their midcourt players can play multiple positions. And they do it really seamlessly. It's really hard to come mm. on and off and not lose any laps in your gameplay. 23 apiece, 2.20 to go. This has all the hallmarks of another nail-biter between these two sides who seem to keep producing them. Williams seeing good minutes in this game. High to Dwan, and she's put herself in range on purpose. Great timing there from Walsh, though. Too high, ball out of play. Maddie Brown dives for it again, can't get it. Still connected to the headset. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. Garrett Nankerville, they keep changing the angle of attack. They're using all channels, Adelaide Thunderbirds, but what Tanya Opp said, let's dominate the middle. If we get wide, come back to centre, but what Lightning are doing really well is trying to shut that and continue to force them wide, which is why they happen to go those extra players or passes, so they need to just stay nice and calm and not rush it. Forced to go back, plenty of defence in that middle channel from the T-Birds. Holding a one goal advantage as it stands. And on comes Riley Batchelor and just swooshes it off the high arc straight away. Straight into the game, straight away ah. a two-pointer, just like that. It's like she's been doing it for years. It really see, changes the complexion of a game, doesn't it? You could just see even Dwan there. She obviously waited on that last two-point shot. And while she got a, got a few tips, see her take that shot a little bit rushed. So she's got to find that balance of maybe sending in that balk, settling her feet, or just working a little bit closer in, maybe building that confidence back. We know they're having a, a difficult start to this season. New combinations, new defensive lineup, inexperienced players. But there's players there that are going to take the Sunshine Coast into the future. And here is one, Batchelor, Conan as well, we're going to see for years after this. As Williams herself, a player of the future, picks one up in the middle channel. Ten seconds to go, the Lightning up by two. An important one here from Horges to level it up, and she doesn't make it sink. So that would have been a big boost for the home side coming in to half time, but instead it's the Lightning who have not the slimmest of margins, but pretty close to the slimmest of margins, but that would have that would have lit up Netball SA Stadium and Georgie Hoyt, oh, I was backing her in for that. She hasn't she's barely missed one. It was very similar to the first quarter. Steph Wood missed that two-point shot. They, they're down by two. Georgie Hall just misses that two-point shot. They're down by two. So it's a real ebb and flow. It'll be interesting to see how these teams reset at halftime to come back out and, and see whether anyone can actually bring that deficit out a little bit more. A 13-11 quarter for the Thunderbirds, and the Lightning respond with a 15-11 quarter. And Kira Tromf is out on court right now with Mahalia Cassidy. Here's one player who's been really putting it all out there tonight for the uh, for the. Sunshine Coast Lightning. Harles, you're on everything out there today. Um, what do you need to do in the second half to keep that intensity up? Yeah, it's just about that consistency we talked about. We need to have that for the full 60. So we've put out a good first half, but it's all about bringing it home now. Absolutely. So Kylie asked for you guys to stick that really tight one-on-one -on -one defence. You've managed to get a heap of turnover ball. You've had a lot of changes through the midcourt. For you, are you going to be staying in that wing defence position, do you reckon, for the rest of the game? We'll see what Kylie does at half time. Uh, let's see. All Cheers. The Thank you. Welcome back to Netball S. Stadium, one half of Super Netball to go, and it is a crucial one in this heritage round. Just two goals in it between the visiting Sunshine Coast Lightning, who are desperate for a win after two losses to start their season. And the Thunderbirds at home looking to go 3-0 for the first time in Suncorp Super Netball. And as we prepare for the centre pass for this third quarter, we are very lucky to be able to talk directly to Tanya Obst, the coach of the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Tanya, first of all, congratulations on the start of the season as a whole. What was the message um, at half-time to make sure you close this one out and go 3-0? I think we just need to shorten our game up, in all honesty. I think we're playing a little bit into uh, the Lightning's hands. They've obviously 
done their homework on us and um, yeah, we need to probably just shorten our game up a little bit to start with. You've obviously rotated a lot through every single player um, and position on court. Is that to just get those fresh legs or it's because people have been going away from the game plan? Uh, yeah, probably, um, yeah, looking to get the, the connections going and, you know, we've been lucky enough to be able to put people into different positions. So, um, you know, now we'll see how we go in a real game. <laughs> and it, it is a bit of a test for the team because they haven't probably in the last couple of rounds been tested this close in a match. What are you hoping to see from them in this in the second half? Well, this is a real test of our character as well, do you know? Like, I think it was being pretty tight sort of the last two weeks at half time. And so now this is about us still maintaining and playing to, to what we know and how uh, we feel like we can get the ball through and, and, you know, making the most of our opportunities. And obviously, Heritage Round, you've been a huge... Um, drive for the Adelaide Thunderbirds and what they've been doing today. Is it important for you guys to get this win for the people that have set the legacy in the crowd watching on? Uh, oh, uh, yes, yes, but also probably more for us. Um, so yeah. we want to honour our past, obviously, but um, we also want to make sure that we continue to put our game forward to get another win on the board for this season. Yeah, look back, but have one eye on creating some more history, and that's what the team is doing. Thank you so much for your time, Tanya. We appreciate the access. Yes, thank you. All right, while that has been happening, the deficit has been halved by one goal. So, probably overselling it somewhat. But we're at one goal in this one, and we're about to go back out to two, are we? Yes, eventually, through Conan again. There's some past players, obviously, sitting in the stands, watching on. Kath Abby Williams, she's not only been a past player here for the Adelaide Thunderbirds, but she's also a huge part of the, the Players Association and, and in driving what these players are really obviously um, being able to do at the moment. Some of those players in the stands play for $200 a game, Will. So to stand, sit in the stands and watch these players get out there and be able to actually say that they're professional athletes is really, really big in our sport. Yeah, it always struck me, Liz Ellis once told me that in her final season, and obviously she being a 100-test superstar, that she got $8,000 in her last season, total. Yeah. And it really speaks volumes for the um, evolution of this sport. And, and now we have the opportunity to make these guys full-time athletes, which hasn't happened for so many years. Yeah, and it, and it has been a quick rise, but we need to obviously acknowledge the past and bring it into the present. And it's great to see those past players here today supporting um, and cheering on the future generation for their, their clubs that they they wore these colours so proudly for, proudly for all for so many years. Sitting up the back in the cool seats too. Nice padded seats <laughs> up the back there. I can see them looking down and hoping for a Thunderbirds win. Hoy just fires it over the top. Pinpoint as Potgita stays. And she really shoots from the chest, Potgita. She's not, not a classic... Uh, not a classic shooting style. It's a quick release. Yeah. Because if, it, if a defender does get to the hands over, it can be hard to score. Great pick up there by Georgie Hall. Just the pressure by Adelaide starting to build. They're lifting another level. We said it was a little bit slow, but you can see that pace and intensity starting to be brought by the Adelaide Thunderbirds already in the third quarter. Eight intercepts now. The Thunderbirds to the Lightning's three. So still improved from the Lightning the last couple of weeks, but not enough. They still, well, they, they still lead by two, though. They're finding ways to score. They're scoring well off their own centre passes. The captain. Al oh, McDonald trying to be that driving force in that attack end, getting it wide, going to that middle of the channel and getting to the circle edge. That is the percentage pass, the percentage play. That's what Tanya asked of, her asked of her players, and they're delivering. Yep, short, short enough, middle channel. Percentage plays, that's what's happening. And Conan, on the other hand, leaves another one short. Cops one in the face, too, for a trouble from Sterling. One goal in it. The captain off. Batchel door on. Porges looks back. Good defensive pressure there from Walsh and Dehaney. And eventually, Walsh comes up with it. This is where sometimes Lightning have... Oh, I was going to say, 
They were starting to bring it down with a little bit more composure. Their transition from defence to attack has sometimes let them down. They luckily got that call back and have had another opportunity to score. But once they get those turnovers, it is about settling and then just slowly working the ball down to a nice, accurate shot. Kira, you, um, you're over there near the coaching bench. It's a tense place to be. Are you feeling it that way? Absolutely, Will. You can feel the tension in the room. You could cut it with a knife. Both coaches, I feel, really want to wrestle the momentum right now in this game, the third quarter, the championship quarter. Really direct messaging to their team to get their hands on the ball and get it down to the post. As we see a mistake there, Maddie, you would know once a new player is introduced to the court, you can expect one or two turnovers from them, which we've seen from the Lightning today. You, you can, but you've got to really make sure that it's like one and done, especially when you're trying to bring that that deficit either out or trying to bring that score, scoreboard pressure back on. You've got to just be really composed with the ball in hand and make it count. Those ch changes need to happen seamlessly because we we know teams can really put the scoreboard pressure and the, the points on really quickly. Cut the tension with a knife. That's why, Kira, we don't let you have a knife. That's one of the reasons. Still two goals to the good, the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Nankerville fires it to Potkita. Confident. And the finish, too. Pokita demanded it. She said, I'm on. And then Nankerville delivered. Batchel door short to Sheridan, who floats it over to Conan. Neither team able to put a run together. It would be really interesting to look at their... Um, how they're scoring. Are they scoring off other the opposition centre pass or their own centre passes? Because it seems to ebb and flow. Majority of the time when it's your centre pass, you should have more control and more attack and more direction. But it seems that they're turning over their centre passes and then obviously scoring off the oppositions. So the run, as you said, they're just not being able to get a solid run through. Goal for goal. Halfway through the third quarter, still a goal separates. Round five last year, 59-58. The Lightning right here at Netball SA Stadium. As again, Conan doesn't get it quite right. And then round 12, the T-Birds, 61-60 at Nissan Arena. So, crushing the home team's dreams both times. Can it happen again? It's shaping up like it could be that way. Nankerville again finds Potgeeter. Nice movement from the South African. Down the baseline to find room. One to the ball, one to the post. Try and split those defenders. And a beautiful execution on the feet there. Third season with the T-Birds for Lenise Potgeeter. Scored 453 goals at 95% last year. And one super shot in the entire year. You don't have to do Stick to what you're shot. good at. Yeah. Know your role, play your role, Will. You know, it brings such a wealth of experience, too, to what can be, well, there's a few inexperienced players, there's a couple of really experienced players, but played for Bath in England, played for Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic in New Zealand, and of course played for the Proteus, so knows plenty of game plans. Lightning just being obviously within, still within the game. Obviously, the last couple of weeks it has grown out. So to see them in the in the in the fight right now and seeing what they're being able to deliver under that pressure, um, it's really great to see for the competition. And I think it's going to build their confidence and hopefully they can maybe get a win today for that that first win of the season would be awesome. I'm just I'm just enjoying how close this one is to round out the the round, and I'm sure all the fans are here as well. And we're coming up now. On super to, shot uh, time. To look like you're coming over, tag the 1v1. Then we've got that second phase drive, all right? So work out who that, doesn't matter who it is, okay? Then you protect that space on the drive down. If we can get that 2v1 and someone going deep, protect that, then we can go for you, all right? Let's go. We work really hard for the rest of this quarter. Let's go. 
Yes. Uh, we're doing wide middle. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Let's go, guys. Back to our structure. Seabirds on three. One, two, three. Seabirds! Let's go! Everything sounds better with a Jamaican accent. There's no question about that. No debate to be had. Plenty of pressure in this one. Six minutes to go. Don't forget, for every Suncorp Super Shot today, Suncorp donates 100 bucks to the Confident Girls Foundation to help the foundation continue their work in keeping girls in the game because obviously it's a high participation, participation sport. We want to keep the girls in the game. They do this through a whole bunch of programs. Recently launched the Community Response Grants to help clubs and associations and its members impacted by the devastating floods, which seem to just continue uh, unabated. For more information on that one, head to cgf.raisley.com. Let's hope we see some super shots in 50 seconds' time. We've seen some changes to both lineups. Obviously, Batchador going back to goal shooter, Steph Wood coming out to goal attack. And even in the Thunderbirds, a little bit of a shift. Latanya Wilson coming back onto goal defence to provide hopefully a few little tips in that defence end for the Thunderbirds. Gee, we've seen some changes today. I think this is probably the most interchanges in a game we've had so far. I also even miss Hall just going back out to goal attack and Dwan coming on to goal attack. It, it may be why the game is so close, Will, because as I think Kira even mentioned in our chat at half time, both teams haven't been able to settle. It's ebbed, it's flowed, there's been a lot more turnovers, but they just haven't been able to really find their feet, find their structures, and put on a couple of goals on in a row. Yeah, I think mean, we're used to seeing 20 goal quarters from teams, but. We're not seeing that, of course. We've only had now 70 goals in nearly three quarters. And when the light... Oh, wow, there we go. 100 bucks in the bag, Lenise Potkina. She hurt, she hurt us. It's a one for the, the season. That's, That's it. That's one it. Done. We just saw it. What an honour. One in 2021, one in 2022. I'll tell you what, that crowds lit up on that one they were whisper quiet before and you could hear plenty of voices out there with the the lightning in defense and laura sherians was one of the loudest and kira you got an update on laura yeah laura just clutched oh, her knee oh sorry sorry walsh flies high carry on i'm getting over excited beautiful touch there by shimon walsh yeah look sherian just clutched at her knee during that break and spoke quickly to the physio so just keep an eye on her here she is running at center um and just see how she goes i mean it could be nothing but let's just keep an eye on her Seems to be moving okay at the moment, but yes, we will do exactly that. As now, well, the T-Birds, they've been trailing by one or two for quite a while, and now they're one up. And Potkeet is going to go for two. Oh, come on. She's teasing us. Oh. Should have shot it, Lanise. Tahaney, Walsh. Crucial sure that the light, lightning make this game count. Whether it's a one or a two point, just make it reward the defense for what they've just provided you. Loose ball. Miller picks up. The 21 year old goes over the top, but it's Sterling who flies high and denies that gain from the lightning. Bringing the crowd into it now as Potkita and Shimon come together. And Dwan will shoot it and she'll be short. She got away from moment, Lise. I'm really riding her on this, aren't I? She's one and done, Will. She wants yeah, to work it. away close 100%. to the post. 100%. Here is the Harvey Norman replay, and you can't throw one up there like that with Shamira Sterling. He's out on court. There just wasn't enough on the pass. But you're playing into uh, Shamira's strengths. You want to keep it low on the ground. Work that nice, easy short ball. We've got Lucky there, the Lightning, and now it's Wood from range. Super shot return, and sinks it. And we're locked up at 38, two minutes to go. Gorgeous. One thing Adelaide are 
are starting to get into a little bit of a habit of he's getting two over the line on their centre pass. They wanted to have one over the line, working on a one-on-one, -on -one, and then having a really good depth on second base. They're struggling with that, and I think that's struggling to have that connection from the centre court or the centre pass, definitely, down to the goal end, and creating some turnovers for them. So they want to go back to that one over the line, one get locked to depth on second base. Giving it away again, the Lightning. Plenty of general play turnovers for both sides. Dwan. Potkeeter. That's her action, but she looks like she rushes it when she misses it. It works well when she nails it, which is most of the time. Cassidy, 1-2 with Miller. As they search for a way down court, and this time it's Batchel door, but she's denied by Sterling, who can't keep it in, but timing impeccable. We've seen Sherry's Sherry. off now. Yeah, wonder whether that is a little bit that knee niggle. She's talking to the physio there. She's going to the table, you can see in the back. And it's disappointing for her in her 100th game. She's going to get some of that magic cream. As again, the Thunderbirds come up with it. Dwan out to provide the option. Wilson, they switch channels now. Potkita looks up, decides to change direction. A real anxiety here in Netball at Say Stadium. And this time, not just coming from me either, this time again the D Birds go up and there is Sherian receiving treatment on a quad. She has done a well for work. Right. Two long Bachelor again. Both teams have let themselves down in that that area today. Both have got some really good turnover ball but haven't been able to capitalise and it's probably, it's why the game is so close in the balance. It's a real battle in the trenches here at Netball SA Stadium. One goal in at the T-Birds up. 15 minutes of Netball to go. Courtside down here at the Lightning bench. I can happy to report that Laura Sherry is suffering cramp, cramp, so she will take the court in this final quarter. She is at wing attack though. She's dropped out of centre. Well, we can see her with that disgusting pickle juice, and that is why she's got that look on her face. It's not good stuff, but it is miracle stuff too. So let's hope we see Laura Sherry back out on court as she tries to drive her team out of Origin Energy three-quarter time and into a first win for this season in her 100th game. We're going to see some changes again for both sides. And it's about making sure you're not just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Need to stay afloat, win this game. It's crucial for both sides. History making for the Thunderbirds if they can do it. And extremely important for the Sunshine Coast Lightning to be able to close out a close one if they're going to get any momentum into the middle part of this Suncorp Super Netball season because there are no easy games. 15 minutes to go. There is the lineup for the Thunderbirds out on court. We're back with a Wilson-Sterling-Jamaican combo in defence. As Dwan leaves one short, Hinchliffe picks up. This is this connection between... Too long. Yeah, between the defence. De defense. We needed an option through the centre. That's where Laura Sherian is so good in assisting and helping bring that ball out of defence from gained balls. Mahali are getting caught a little bit too wide on that one. Sherry back out on court. Didn't take long. Magic pickle juice. High, too high. This time, Dwan squanders it. So, who can get out of their own way in the last 14 minutes of this one and pick up a crucial four points? Because, you know, the ladder, it's already taking shape. The Fever picking up that win over the Firebirds by eight goals, and that required some needle threading. Lightning getting really crowded in their court play there. We saw Steph Wood, Sherry and Mahalia Cassidy and even Hinchcliffe all in the same area. Get a bit of width, get a bit of depth. Let them bring it down to you. I know Steph Wood trying to get up a little bit higher to help that ball come down. But just give them a little bit of time, give them a little bit of space. High and Sterling is equal to the task again. Not learning the lessons. Feeding into the circle like that.
Wilson switches play direction straight down to Potgita, who corrects her position. Hinchliffe nearly anticipated that one. And it's Dwan who will trickle it in. And now the T-Birds are back in front. Can they put a run of a couple of goals together? Juan high to the pocket. Or just comes back. Sherry doing her best to disrupt. Much better patience. If you haven't got the options in front, you've always got the transverse line to back up. Go back, reset, go again. Find a better angle, find a better avenue to get closer to the post. Yeah, that patience. Eventually the middle channel opened up. And another goal for Tipper Tuan. Coming over from the five birds. Really important signing. Cassidy in the pocket. Looks and looks again. This time it's Wilson. So Sterling made them look twice and Wilson picked up the intercept. Good steady there by Hannah Petty. It was coming down nice and fast. Much better play there by the Thunderbirds. The little quick passes. A great tip there by Latanya Wilson. And straight away, out in transition, let the ball go, drives again. As I said, good settler from Hannah Petty to really just take a little bit of a breather and then find a different avenue to post. HCF tactical timeout. Three goals of Thunderbirds to the good. They're 3-1 in this quarter. Let's listen in. However, it's got to start from this end. Between the two of you, someone has to cut long so that there's a space to fill. And let's do what we did at training, where it's the one that's closest to the ball go. And to hang out wide to be able to fill a space. And so Hulls can also fill through the centre channel. But it has to come from here. Defensively, be closer to your players, and we've got to jump front and force them to slow it down. Circle edge, circle edge. Let's go. Let's go. Do not back away from this challenge. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Don't use the whole 90 seconds in the ACF tactical timeout. No, you don't. No. When you're ready, you're when ready. You're ready, you're ready. Sometimes too much chatter can be too confusing. Get your points across and then get out. No. And then it's like hurry up and wait. But Carly, was, she was really direct then. She said, you know, out of transition, she wants a long drive and then a shortcut and fill. And even in attack, just connect. Connect, get a little bit closer, work off each other. We're getting to some intense times now. 12 minutes to go in this one. You can see the quarter breakdown there. Thunderbirds won the first and the third quarter. The Lightning 15-11 in the second quarter. And Tanya Ops no doubt had some things to say, Kira, in that huddle. Absolutely, as we see Tipper Duong go to the post there. Look, she's ecstatic with their start to this quarter, 3-1. She just asked oh. for, as we see Laura take the ball over the edge again. Calm heads, control, and keep it short. That's what she's looking for from the Thunderbirds. Won't be happy with that turnover there from Georgie Horges. Every pass crucial now. T-Birds up by three. This possession, very important. And the Jamaican connection making it very difficult in the middle eventually. Good, uh, just good patience to eventually find a way through the middle to Conan. So, a goal and a possession. Can they go back to back? See that all of those Lightning players are all on that one side. Yes, Kara Conan, come and open it up a little bit. They need to make sure that they've got even distribution in the channels. They've one side, one middle. Kind of heady, nice try. She was offside though. If you had been able to kick that in, I would have said that was nearly intercept of the season so far. She was t like toenails on that line then. Just stop down there in the middle of your sentence, mate. What was that about? <laughs> was just like she's... Just take a pause. It of was, the was, season. Of the season. <laughs> There's still plenty of netball to be played, Will. <laughs> plenty of netball to you be played. You chucked so far on the back end. Like, so oh, that's always nice. Please. Subco gets another run, though. Mm. Great mop work. It 
It's important though, when that surface gets really slippery, any player driving into it, you slip, there's an ankle, there's a knee. It's not worth it. So we're lucky to have the Sabco mop and the volunteers doing the work. I expect several free Sabco mops to turn up at your house in the next week or two. Couple of mentions there. And the Lightning go back within one, which has basically been the story of this game so far. Ten minutes on the clock. It's going to be a crucial super shot. Five minutes in the power five at the back end. Who's going to be willing to take one? Dwan. Meanwhile, Potgeter and Dehaney just knees and elbows under the post. Steady shot there from Tipper Dwan. She's only on six from 12. She's not little, shooting well. She struggled a little bit over Dehaney's hands at times, but really good for her to just back herself in, one little balk, then put it through. Go back to one again. No, we don't. And Wilson, no, she doesn't come up with it, does she? She does in the end. Well, Conan's going to rue that. She's now missed five, but she picks up the beautiful ball. You can't take your eyes off this for a second. No. It is back and forth. Wilson's having a game. She's improving with every game, Latonya Wilson. Conan in the front space this time, makes no mistake. And we are back to a one goal game, 8.50 on the clock now. Wilson, as you mentioned, her footwork is so good around the body. So she's just getting little tips and, and then running onto it, which is the that hardest part to then get a deflection, but then go pick it up as a, as a gain is super important. Potkita steadies the ship at the other end, her 24th from 29 attempts. And we're back at two. Sherian, short to Cassidy, immediately find Conan. Wood wades her way through the Jamaicans to find the front space. High arc on that one, beautiful shot. It's quite low scoring. As we said, we haven't seen huge blowouts in the quarter. But can we just see a super shot? Power play just go back and forth. Maddie Hinchliffe has been in the battle at wing defence. And Kira, how are you seeing that battle unfold? Yeah, look, for me, I'd really like to see the centre pass set up for Maddie, go one on one on her own play. As you see her out of play again, which has happened in the last three centre passes, and it's releasing the pressure for the Thunderbirds. Um, I think it would be better for her to just work that strong hands over and come off the body because she's really caught the eye of the umpire now. Thanks, Kira. It's great to have such expert insights from the sideline. And now we're at the Thunderbirds, two to the good. There is Hinchliffe. Cassidy, Tara Hinchliffe. Actually, that's Maddie. Oh, I made the mistake. I knew I would. <laughs> it's inevitable, and the ball goes up. Conan did well there to come up with that. The easy option would have been to go to Steph Wood, but she went to the two-on-one. Cassidy up in the air. Could have gone Conan. anywhere. Lucky to get away with that. Home alone, pot keyed up. Dehaney drawn out. And who's going to blink first? 6.50 to go. Sherian finds her captain. Forced to go back to the transverse line. Some discussion there about providing the option. I think Steph Wood just wants Mahali to get down, get down. Get a bit of depth, then you can come back out. She's just floating around near the transverse line. Yes, you're a nice, safe option, but you're not creating anything for yourself and you're not giving anyone else space to create something from it either. I see a future in coaching for you, Brown. No, I think I'm too savage. We'd be sticking the uh, microphone in there every time, I can tell you that. One goal, six minutes. Both teams desperate. The Thunderbirds desperate to make history in front of all their past players and a packed house here. And Zachunko is desperate to get off the mark and leave the Magpies by themselves down the bottom of the Suncorp Super Netball ladder. Cassidy Wood fires to Conan. Confident coming back after a game off. Smile there from Wood too. 
I think it's a relief. <laughs> Thank goodness it got through. Tara Conan has been in everything. She's had well, nearly 40 shots. She sunk 34 of them. And Kira, how are you seeing her game develop in this one? Yeah, absolutely. She's really taken on that goal attack role there. As you see her drive all the way out of the circle to release that pressure and drive back on Shamira. She beat her to the post, and I think that's one area they can really exploit Shamira in this last five minutes. It's a really good point. Draw Shamira out of the circle and hopefully get that nice space along the baseline for a step to, to expose and draw, draw pass and along. Power five time. Last one for the match. Cassidy uses her three seconds, waits. And clever use of space there from Conan with Wood helping draw the pair forward from Super Shot Range. And there you go, we're all locked up, 48 apiece. Well, 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 Steph Wood when it counts. She knows what needs to be done. And you know what, this instantly puts the pressure back on the Thunderbirds. Are you going to take a one? Are you going to take a two? Both teams have two-point shooters there to shoot it. Here we go, Pogita. Can she do it again? No. Dishes it off. Could we be heading for extra time? Twan now from range puts it up and swishes it. Wow, anything you can do, I can do better, says Tipper Twan, and we're back at two goals apiece. Steph Wood asking, swing, reset, we're not in a position, let us work the ball around a little bit. They're trying to find that little bit of a mismatch, trying to get the ball out. They obviously know Steph Wood is where the two-point shot is going to come. Oh, but she's hey, given it up, hey. and Wilson cleans up and doesn't want the replay. Wilson picks up. Unlucky there for Sterling. So she started to double to replay the ball, couldn't pick it up again, so she's tried to shield it off. Another Step one, on. two in a row, swish this time, 50 apiece. Oh, my heart can't take it. Let's have an HCF timeout. The players are getting frustrated. Was that a pass or was that a shot? They're starting to get a little bit confused, a little bit agitated. There's a little bit of chat back to the umpires. These last three minutes are going to be exciting. It is going to be exciting. Just a reminder, if two teams are tied at the end of a regulation match, a 90-second break will be taken. They'll stay at their ends, and then it'll be five minutes of extra time. Let's listen in. Hey, hey. Hey. This moment is for us. This is about momentum that we have built, been building three games for. You are doing exactly what we ask and you're picking the right passes to connect. In attack, in defence, work to the front position. We don't want to concede, we want to run full through. Let's go get it. Three minutes, 16 seconds, all to play for here in round three. Heritage round of Suncorp Super Netball on Fox Netball. What a way to round out a Sunday afternoon with an absolute nail biter. I'm trying to think of another word for nail biter. Is there another one? <laughs> nah, nah, that's it. That's all there is. Tweet me another word and I'll use it. Kira Trump, you were listening into the other huddle. Yeah, absolutely. The Thunderbirds Ooh. had a few players had a few questions about whether that last shot should have been a pass only for the Netball Tragics. There are some times that you can only pass, not shoot. So, big turnover there by Sh Walsh, me, Shimon. Uh, look, Hannah Petty looked her players in the eyes and said, we practice this, let's do it, girls. So you look for the Thunderbirds here to lift again. Same message coming out of the Lightning Camp. This is the momentum we've been building for as Nankerville looks to keep it in. McDonald, she obviously gave Sorry, that McDonald. ball away. She wanted to fight for it back. See Riley Batchelor come straight onto that goal shooter position. Byrne, I think, looking for the two prong attack. Two long range shooters. Keep the defenders guessing where it's going to come from. Batchelor off the high arc again and nails it again. 
she has ice in her veins. What a great moment. This is what every netball wants to come and play for, these close games. And can you stand up when your team, you're under the pressure and you need to stand up? Oh, Wilson again. She's had such a good second quarter. Speaking of standing up. Individual brilliance in defence and attack here at Netball SA Stadium. Lightning up to 148 on the clock. Important possession. Potkita should make no mistake and doesn't. They're still down by one. This is that. They'll have a centre pass. Yeah, that nice one over. Centre pass. Can we get us two off this one and really bring that deficit out to three and put oh, the pressure on White? You're going to do that? Yep. Oh, no. That wasn't the pass they wanted. Well, that's a heartbreaker. Smart netball required now from the Sunshine Coast Lightning if they're going to open their account for 2022. Wood calms it down, goes back to Walsh. 12 intercepts for the game from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Time ticking, a minute on the clock now. Batchel door back. Smart by Lightning. They want to keep possession, but they also want to tick the time down. Both teams would have played these scenarios out at training. Yeah, it's now sticking to the process. I saw the Giants do this masterfully in round one. Jamaicans bouncing around all over the place. And the, they come up with it, do they? No! Steph Wood, so smart. Go back out, waste some time. Let's seconds. go again. 27 seconds. Looking back again, this is great play from Steph Wood and Co. They're throwing everything at it. 18 seconds now. And eventually, with a two-point shot, and it's an air ball, and instead they've got 10 seconds to get down court. Penny fires it off. Down they come. Long ball. In now to Potgetter to two long. No, Potgetter to stop. There's going to beat him in the Sunshine Coast Lightning. They're going to win it. They couldn't get down court. Wow, what a finish to this game. The buzzer beats Lenise Potgita. Smart play by the Lightning. They knew it. They knew the scenario. Once they got the ball in their hand, it was like, let's play keepings off. Let's just tick that time down. And when the time came to have a shot, let's have a shot in about 10 to 12 seconds. That's going to put the pressure on Adelaide if we do turn it over to get it down to a score. And it worked perfectly. So once again, Sunshine Coast come to Netball SA Stadium and win by a goal, halting the Adelaide Thunderbirds' momentum and picking up just a little bit of their own and a steadying influence from Steph Wood when it mattered, just like Joe Harton did for the Giants a couple of weeks ago. Just wound down the clock, kept it calm, got the shot away. It was an air ball in the end from Bachelor, but it didn't matter because... They were split second perfect. They were. One more second and maybe we would have had extra time. And they're those scenarios, as I said, every team plays for them at training, but it's how you can actually execute it when the pressure's on and it is do or die. It is indeed, and Kira Tromp is down with our player of the match in her 100th match. Yeah, absolutely. So proud of this girl, Laura Sherry, in 100 games today in the player of the match. You're amazing, mate. Your team got out there to finish one up with a few seconds to go. How does it feel? I'm so excited. It's really what we needed right at this stage. And everyone's been working so hard the past couple of weeks to get our defence happening. We got ball today and we used it. You guys really stuck to the game plan. You were consistent for 60 minutes and you stood up in the moments when it counted. Tell us about you, your feeling, your cramp. Where were you at in that last few minutes of that game? I was cramping by half time today. It's been a problem right through the 100 games, to be honest. But um, got it back under control, got out there back in wing attack, and I was excited to finish it off with the girls. I'm so proud of everyone. Kate Shimon's intercept at the end there was just vital for us, and I'm so proud of her. Yeah, Tara at the end there finishing off. Mate, I'm proud to have played alongside you, and I know how hard you've worked to be where you are today. So enjoy the win. All the best, and we'll see you again on Wednesday night for another away trip in Melbourne. We'll be there. <laughs> awesome.